Hello and welcome to another video in the Experience XCMS series. Today we are experiencing Photon CMS. So let's dive right in. Photon CMS is, um, well, a self hosted content infrastructure enabling you to power content in any digital product. So, um, what that means is that you're basically installing Photon in your own server as opposed to in running it as a SaaS as some other CMSs are actually you know, functioning. So other than that, Photon CMS is a headless uh, CMS system. So it's API driven. What that, what that means is that it basically doesn't have a front end. It uses uh, a RESTful API to serve and allow, allow and to allow you to manipulate the content inside of the database and inside of the system. So if you click here, uh, there's a really, really detailed API documentation and how everything works and how everything is laid out. So basically, uh, you can even do without Fodan CMS uh, control panel if that is something you you'd prefer, but um, you probably want to use Photon CMS admin panel, like the control panel, which is built using Vue.js, by the way. Uh, so it's super extendable and super easy to use and also responsive. You can see the preview here, and I'm going to show you a bit more when I log in. And uh, uh, the, the Photon system is built on Laravel CMS framework. So not only it uses Laravel to kind of, you know, structure everything, and um, it, it's not only using it to, to leverage the Photon CMS, uh, well, growth, but also it enhances the Laravel development process instead of imposing its own. So that's like a huge deal. And you know, anyone who ever used Laravel knows how easy it is to develop various websites. So Photon CMS is, you know, just taking this a step further. So um, let's explore the um, the options like um, licensing options, you have basically three tiers. The free one, uh, which if you include wordmark attribution, it's free. If not, it's 49 per non-commercial personal website. Then you have the basic, which is basically limited to two user accounts and some other things down below. And then there's a pro version for about 300 bucks, which has all the features. So Photon is free to use. It's a freemium software. As long as you're in the development or staging environment, you can use it as long as you like. And uh, to be able to, to install Photon, you just click here. That will navigate you to the resources section, installing. And then the easiest way to get Photon up and running is using the, the Composer installer. Uh, it's a package similar to Laravel installer, which allows you to run something like this. Photon new blog will, would, would set up a new uh, Photon based project in the blog folder. And then all you have to do is navigate to blog.test and you're up and running. So let's, let's get it, this uh, cooking in the background. Uh, all right, experiencing Photon CMS. Let's provide some basic database credential and and it's crafting the application. So um, down below, you'll see that uh, you will get two predefined users. One of them is uh, super administrator at phoneoncms.test with this password. And you should probably log in with this user first time you log into your newly created system. So um, Let's see how the installment process is doing. So right now it's still uh, pulling the data in from the internet. And uh, let's check back on the process once it's finished. In the meantime, I'm just going to prepare for the new uh, uh, newly created project over here. So right now 
yeah, it's done. So there was an error because I probably hit this too too soon. And uh, let's uh, open this folder and see what's in it. So basically, this is your basic Laravel app structure. So you want to go and check out the .env file first. There are a bunch of options here. Most of them are Photon related. We're just going to uh, fiddle with a few. Uh, and the rest of them are, are pretty well uh, you know, described in the documentation. So first of all, you want to use you probably want to use ImageMagick instead of GD Library because it produces so much better results. And Photon CMS also uh, uses the best practices as uh, suggested by Google PageSpeed. So um, all the all the you know various tweaks that Google PageSpeed uh, recommends in terms of uh, retaining the best image quality while minimizing the file size are implemented inside of the Photon CMS system. So you should probably go with this because the results are pretty good. And then uh, you probably want to use Photon caching because this will speed up your front end so much. It, it, what it does is it caches all the GET requests and uh, it invalidates them automatically for you because uh, we uh, are, are, you know, as you create new modules, new photon modules, uh, those module names are used as uh, caching tags in the backend. So if you've used Laravel caching, then you know uh, there's this tags concept that works only with Redis, not with file system. That's why I changed this cache driver over here. And whenever you update or save an entry in a certain module, then it invalidates that portion of cache. So not the entire cache, just that portion. So that's all done automatic, automatically and works pretty good. And um, we want to change this. So mail server, uh, let me grab my settings over here. So I'm using mail trap to capture all outgoing emails from the system. So um, I'm going to be using this as I test. And also, I'm going to change the application URL because this is uh, something being used in various, I don't know, email links creation processes and whatnot. So I'm going to do this. You can see that my database credentials are all set and that's fine. I believe that everything else is good. So let's try and log into the control panel. Uh, you can see that I'm already logged in as I've tested this just a minute before starting the recording. But uh, when you first arrive, uh, you will land at this and this screen. And as I said, you probably uh, remember, uh, you need to log in with a super administrator user over here, and you're in. So clicking in the top right corner will take you to your user profile. So the usual stuff here, email, password, first name, last name, and the roles. So the super administrator role is the one that has access to everything. All the other roles, for instance, the administrator role, has a little less access than this one. And um, you can set your roles here, so multiple roles, multiple permissions apply directly to users. These settings are, you know, additive. Uh, so, so anything um, you set here applies together with uh, whatever is set for a certain role. So um, let's, let's try and register a new user and see how that works. So I'm going to log out and then I'm going to sign up with a new account. One thing to notice about passwords is that it requires a, a, a bit more 
you know, strength. So using letters, numbers and special characters is the default for a photon, though you can change it, do whatever you like. Uh, I'm registering an account and I'm successfully registered and I should be able to log in as soon as I verify my email address, which is uh, what I'm about to do using the MailTrap service. So uh, I still don't have anything because I haven't started the queue worker and it's processing my notifications and sending out an email is one of them. So I received my nicely formatted email which requires me to confirm my email address so I can just click over here or, or the, down this link below and I'm successfully confirmed and now I should be able to log in. So it was test vote on CMS dot test and password and I'm in. So you see that I have a slightly more restricted uh, access to certain features that's because I'm not a super administrator so if I log out and log back in as a super administrator I can see that I received a notification that a new user has been registered which is nice the notification center by the way in Photon CMS is pretty well done and it by default serves you with a certain notification such as this one but you're able to set your own and you're able to inform your users uh, using multiple channels uh, such as uh, well uh, email notifications database notifications then uh, you have your pusher notification implementation over here that would you know pop up nice messages to your users in this control panel and also out of the box Photon supports Firebase push notifications meaning that if you are developing mobile applications using Photon CMS as your backend service then you're able to send notifications straight to your uh, users I mean your mobile app users uh, phones so that's pretty pretty neat and really nice features that I feature that I haven't seen in other CMS systems of this uh, well in this non um, non enterprise level CMSs I'd say so if I click here then I'm taken to the test user profile and I can see all the details about this user and another nice feature is that I can impersonate this user uh, what this uh, is going to help you with is if you imagine that this test user has a certain problem in your SaaS app and you need to view the entire system from his perspective so you just click this button and you might not be able to see this um, pretty well because uh, my, my video is blocking the top right corner but it actually says that you're logged in as a test user and then uh, in the top, uh, sorry, bottom left corner, uh, the way to stop impersonating this user is to click here. But you also notice uh, that that there are no advanced options over there because I'm not logged in actually as a super administrator anymore. Right now, I'm you know observing the system as if I'm logged in with uh, test users' email and password, which I'm you know not. But it's it's a perfect way. For you to test the system so i'm back being a super administrator which i can double check over here and uh, it's uh, it's a pretty pretty nice way to debug your system so uh, about um, password strength and email uh, address verification processes and and whatnot you can read more details here in the sidebar help everything is explained in much greater de detail in the website though uh, having this sidebar help prove to be very very helpful for for you know yourself develop, um, developing a website and then for your clients who use the website after you uh, set up the, the whatever you're building for them um, so if you want to 
uh, you can actually modify uh, these little help um, well snippets uh, I'm going to show you how uh, experiencing let's start our sublime editor and if you navigate to the resources assets photon CMS dependencies JS help you'll notice that there's a main.md file which has certain well, uh, parts that resemble to this. So basically, if you follow this structure, you'll be able to automatically place any anything in the sidebar here in any of uh, Photon modules. So there's a bit of an explanation over here, and then you just compile everything and uh, you can get rid of the existing help sections and uh, you know set up your own so so this is really really good and really nice um, uh, before uh, explaining about the roles and permissions let me show you another nice user related features which is user invitations so I'm gonna invite myself in and I'm gonna assign myself with an uh, well super administrator role and right now I've sent out an invitation to myself which I should be seeing in my inbox you can see there are some other emails here so this one was welcome on board for the test user and then this is the test uh, user has just registered an account an email sent to a super administrator and then here's my invitation to come on board so uh, I should log out first and then click this button here so that I can uh, complete my registration so since my email is al already pre-filled I don't need to do it again and since I received an invitation to my in in my uh, you know mailbox that means that my email is also verified so clicking register your account allows me to uh, you know just log in directly without having to verify my email address and uh, going over here I can check out my uh, account and since I'm super administrator I, I you know re even received the notification that I've just created my account <laughs> that's nice and um, that's it uh, invitations are super uh, easy way to invite your users hold on where are they um, and and actually even mass invite your users so you're able to upload the CSV file containing um, you know the the certain structure of the CSV file is explained in the docs but you're able to mass invite I don't know 100 1000 users directly into your system if you're building something for a huge company or something like that so let's go back to being a super administrator user and mark everything as red and uh, let's talk a bit about permissions. Permissions are actually a rules with a certain string format that tell Photon what someone uh, has or has an ability to do. So uh, building this string uh, by yourself is not that easy though once you know the syntax it it's not that hard uh, that's why photon has the permission rule generator so rules are really uh, powerful in in i mean permission rules are really power powerful in photon cms much more power than in in other cms systems i believe because uh, it allows you to fine tune really really you know little details when when permissions are are to be um, set for your system so for instance you want your user to be able to edit only his user account in users module you you're able to do that and I bet it's somewhere around here uh, users cannot edit um yeah i guess that this is the one so this one says that you're you're not able to add it uh, a user 
module entry unless um, your ID matches the, the actual uh, record ID that you're trying to edit. So this is really, really powerful feature right there. And uh, another nice thing is that you can prevent certain users from uh, editing certain fields. So you, you, you can provide an access to a module and, you know, just have a bunch of fields grayed out or, you know, hidden completely and stuff like that. And also you can um, have certain users be able to read, but not be able to create new entries and, you know, allow them to edit or not. So it's it's really granular and, and works works really well. So, um, and, and this is really important for building multi-tenant applications. So this is something that you cannot do without. Um, and then there are roles which are a way for you to define certain user groups and apply the permissions you've just set to those groups. And then if you go in your uh, user management uh, module, then you're able to assign certain roles to certain users. And then if I want to, uh, you know, assign some other uh, permissions to this user, I can do that over here as well. And also if I don't see a permission rule that applies, I can quickly generate it. You know, it's super easy and you, know, you can see that this generator is fun to play with. It automatically creates various um, forums and I'm not, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just love to click here. All right, so that's it. Permission system is really, really promising and it you know, empowers you to do all, all sorts of sorts of crazy stuff. So, uh, the core of the Photon system is the generator. It's the way for you to generate new structures, meaning new database tables that will store the data for this module. And, you know, it automatically cre creates some Laravel um, classes for you, such as um, a mod class like the model that extends the eloquent ORM and also it will create some um, additional extender classes which I'm going to cover a bit later so um, in the experiencing series I usually take the CMS that I'm uh, reviewing and I'm trying to recreate the CMS podcast so I've actually went ahead and moved the CMS podcast to use the Photon CMS instead of the Jekyll, well, uh, static site generator that uh, I've used before. And I've also added this powered by tag down below because this is the non-commercial uh, type of website and I'm not paying for the license. And uh, let's, uh, let's quickly see what sections do we need to, um, well, create the, the backend structure for the CMS podcast. I have my uh, categories over there, episodes, reviews, blog, and then I have posts. And the posts are actually tagged uh, so that my XML feed has certain tags. Uh, applied when users are trying to find podcasting episodes in the, in the iTunes. So we actually need three, uh, well, modules over here. So the first one shall be the sortable module. This will allow me to drag and drop uh, the entry entries in the sidebar over here so that if I don't like the, the way they are sorted, I can do it quickly. While non-sortable module will just, you know, stack new entries uh, chronologically as I add them. Uh, the sortable module uses the nested set module, uh, sorry, model, which is a bit expensive when it comes to, uh, you, you know, trying to, to have mul multiple hundreds or thousands of entries in the database table. So be careful to use sortable modules for, I don't know, categories, uh, categorization for, well, you'll see. 
If it becomes sluggish, that's why that's because you're using a sortable module instead of a non-sortable module. So uh, multi-level sortable module is sort of similar to sortable, but it also allows you to, to kind of nest deeper, uh, like uh, uh, an entry inside of another entry, which is superb for building, you know, three structures of categories and stuff. So right now we're we're using sortable module to build the uh, ca categories. Sorry, categories. And you can see that my table name is automatically generated. Uh, I'm gonna return here a bit later, and let's add an icon. So this is using font font awesome icon set and I'm just gonna have a, a name field over here which I'm gonna make required so this here is validation rules as used by Laravel so if you want to add more you just you know go ahead and type whatever you like in the Laravel documentation whatever works there works here and the tooltip text uh, tooltip text uh, will just you know be sh shown in the new module like like this so let's do I don't know category name here though although you don't have to fill it out and I'm gonna make it editable nullable not and since it's required and uh, I'm gonna add a name field over here in my template for the anchor text so what anchor text does, it, it generates automatically the, the name representation of your entry uh, in the sidebar, as you're about to see. And the slug is pretty much the same, only it will create the slug in the slug-like for format. So I guess that's it. If you click create, then you'll be presented with a preview kind of modal window, which allows you to uh, well, verify the changes before you finally commit them and this is very nice once you start editing your modules so that you're able to, you know, for, the, for one last time before you hit this confirm button, see that you're not about to destroy some data or whatever it happened and this feature definitely helps. So I'm confirming it's uh, running the creation process and I'm done. If you click the view module uh, here or here, you're taken to the new uh, Photon module. So let's create these three episodes, reviews and blogs. So I'm doing episodes. You can see that the slug is automatically generated. If I hit space here, uh, uh, it's, uh, it should you know, the, once you step out of this field, it stops uh, generating the slug automatically because it allows you to set it um, the way you'd prefer. But I'm going to show you with the next ent entry. I'm um, clicking the create uh, another uh, tick box here so that I'm able to enter some, some more here. And I'm going to deliberately uh, do blog right now. Blog. Uh, hold on. Oh, it's not uh, generating my slug anymore. I'm um, wondering why, though, yeah, because I stepped out of the focus. And, uh, yeah, blog and, oh, sorry, slug field required. And finally, uh, reviews. Hmm. Yeah. Something happened to the slug generator, and that's about it. And uh, let's let's move this reviews up because that's where we want to have it. So I've just demoed the drag and drag and drop over here functionality. So that's nice, and our module is working. So let's create some more tags module. I'm also using the name over here and also, well, name for the slug, 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 and uh, name required, not nullable, create, create, that's done, 
and then create new module and it's just gonna be post sorry post so to so and then also title uh, and then title for the slug and I'm gonna use news icon for this and add a title just a little, little bunch here not not the entire day that um, I should probably need and uh, then the heading and uh, text and use rich text for that and I'm gonna make this required too and then add some more let's add many to many relation many to one actually for my categories and relate this to categories and make that required and then move down and add some more let's let's do many to many with tags so this will link to tags and it will automatically generate the connecting table for me but you know it if i want to i can name this pivot table the way i like and also specify local and foreign key and uh, I'd like to have this lazy loaded and that's uh, that's good because you know if you have many many like I don't know 5,000 tags in this uh, module in this database table then if you don't take this lazy loading uh, option over here it's gonna try and load everything in the drop down which will kill your uh, CP uh, like control panel so you want to lazy load all the all the modules um, that have many entries. So what else? Uh, let's do an author relation, uh, many to many to one, and this would be the author, author, and relate this to users, and also let's have a, a headline image. which will uh, link to assets and create. All right, and we're done. So if we uh, navigate to the posts module, you can see that my form is automatically created and I'm entering my first post, test post, test post heading and then some lorem ipsum text by the way uh, photon is using redact I'm, I'm never sure how to pronounce this redactor i guess um receiving editor and uh i'm just i don't have any tags and right now i'm not able to create any but i'm going to show you the way to automatically add tags without leaving posts module that's also one of the nice features and i'm adding myself as the author and also i want to add some images so i'm gonna try and upload some files i'm gonna upload a couple uh, and while i'm uploading i'm able to um, kind of you know tag uh, these all these files that are about to be uploaded right now so i'm tagging these as a posts uh, whatever imagery and you can see that i've created a new tag right now and by clicking the create button it's uploading and i'm able to select any of these i like this one and you can see the details about this photo and uh photon supports image sizes what that means is that it allows you to set up any number of photo photo formats to be automatically generated once you upload the original so out of the box photo only has two like a thumbnail uh, image size which is 120 by 90 pixels and the large image which takes uh, 960 pixels uh, well it downsizes it's a bit more complicated uh when 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 you have this auto generated uh width or height but it's all in the docs i'm not gonna 
go into too many details right now. But what what's nice here is that you're able to frame any of the images that you're probably going to use for your responsive websites and set the frame the way you like. Just hit this update and you know it updates and you can do this for for any of the images that you you know updated. Uh, though, although by default it, it you know takes whatever is centered over here so that's also nice so let's you know just toy a bit with this here and you can see that it works pretty well and to conclude our asset selection I'm just gonna select it and hit select and close by the way there's an advanced search over here that allows you to use whatever you tag your images with so if I remember correctly it was something yeah, post imagery, and then if I click search, and it you know just returns the, the the images tagged with this, or I can use alt text, title, whatever. I'm actually selecting this image right now, and then if I click create, it created a new task post over here. So this is really nice, and uh, you can see how quickly I've, I've built the entire structure that I actually need for, for my, um, well, CMS podcast website. So, um, let me quickly show you another nice feature of this uh, little anchor text generator. So, you're able to actually dive in the category um, relation, so if I do categories, I believe, category, yeah, categories, and then category name. If I did this correctly, save changes, the preview is uh, useful as always, it should regenerate yeah, and it included the category for this entry right here. So check this out. It updated automatically. What this what this does for you is it enables you to use this quick search to quickly you know separate uh, certain post types from from other and quickly you know select them and whatnot. So um, before moving on, I just like to hit create uh, with an empty form to show you uh, the way you know the error reporting is handled so that's really nice um, let's uh, switch over now to the CMS podcast local development website you can see that it works it's uh, completely set up and I'm going into the admin panel right now. And here is uh, how the brushed version looks like. So uh, you, you can see that I'm using category name for my anchor text here, the slug. And uh, then you can see that there are a bit more fields over here. It's probably better that I show you this by actually navigating to the post module itself. So you can see that I have different um, category posts types here. And if I do reviews, it'll just show me the reviews here. And if I do episodes, it's just episodes, so it's easy for me to you know quickly navigate to certain um, certain entry types, and you can see that I have my tags here for this specific uh, entry, uh, and if I want to add a one that doesn't exist yet, so that should probably be whatever. Um, I don't know, photo on CMS maybe. Yeah, create a new tag and I'm done. It allowed me to enter a new tag without having 
to go to the tags module to enter it and then go back here to, to uh, uh, select it, which would be tedious and uh, I don't know, uh, nobody likes that. And also there's my author and uh, publishing date, date field. And also I'm able to upload um, audio files of my podca podcasts here. And I'm going to show you a nice addition. I'm closing this and this and this. And I'm going to uh, go to the CMS podcast. Start that in Sublime. And, you know, ever since the first Photon, uh, uh, sorry, CMS podcast episode, I had to measure the duration and enter that manually and then also measure the, the file size to enter that manually because that's what's used in the XML file uh, that I actually need to supply iTunes with. And um, Photon comes with extenders. So this is the backend feature that you can access uh, by accessing app, Photon CMS dependencies, and then module extensions. So in my posts module extension, I created a pre-create and pre-update <coughs> uh, methods which will intercept the creation or update process and do something to to the you know collection before it's actually saved in the database. So what I'm doing right here is I'm stepping into the get file um, function which uh, retrieves the newly uploaded audio file. It uses the, the FF probe uh, class to actually get the file duration. And then also I'm using the file size uh, command, I mean, uh, method to read the file length and then I'm returning this and I'm storing this dynamically generated data along with the data sent uh, straight from the form and saving all of this into a database. So this is a, a superb process, you know, that relieved me from, you know, doing, doing having to do uh, a, another couple of minutes of work. Um, and this is this is really 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 nice. I, I've, I'm probably going to do a, a blog post about how Fodan can help anyone create a blog. I mean a CMS blog type of website quickly and easily. And uh, let me let me quickly check my script. What else I wanted to show you? Um, yeah, the menus. So you can see that uh, we have shortcuts here to access our uh, most important modules. So how do you do that? There's a menu editor over here, and these are uh, there are two menus that Photon ships with. The first one is admin panel menu. This is the one. And the second one is the quick launch menu, which is this one over here, allowing you to add kind of short, shortcuts to your dashboard. Um, actually, uh, the items are added in the menu items editor, and then you just select the, the menus available in, uh, in the module before, and you just go ahead and create. Let's say I want to add a user's uh, shortcut over here to access the users module. So I just do users admin panel module link over here, select a users module and click create. And if I refresh, it's here. And then if I want to do the same for the quick launch menu, I do the same. Uh, Slug has already taken, users quick launch, create. And if I go back to the dashboard, here it is. And while we're here, um, you can see this, this little widget 
uh, pulling out the latest posts. So this is a super nice way to provide some, uh, well, brief statistical data for your uh, CMS users. So let's create another widget while we're here. So let's say that I'm allowing users to register to my system and I want to track how many users are actually registering in real time. So I'm just gonna do heading text over here at the user icon because that's uh, users, all right, and I have it, yeah, I don't know, orange. And I want to refresh this like every five seconds, like a madman. And uh, also I'm gonna use profile image as the image field. So th this uh, circle here pulls from uh, whatever asset type of field you have in the module you're tracking. And then when I click done, I'm done. So you can see that it automatically pulled uh, the users out of uh, the database. Currently, the system has only one user, that's me. And um, if I create another, well, let's not waste time. It would just automatically appear here. And uh, if you wait a couple of seconds, you can see the blue line firing above. That's this module, this uh, widget refreshing. So I'm just going to remove it. Don't need it. And that's it. So um, regarding the menus, let's say that you have a front end that requires multiple menus structure and whatnot. So I'm creating a custom menu right now. Uh, and in my custom menu, I, well, I can describe it with my custom description and then have a max maximum menu depth. So this would, would limit the nesting level for, for your new module to, uh, you know, nesting level of two. And there are actually four different menu link types. Uh, the first one, admin panel module link, allows you to link to a module inside the CP. The static link would allow you to link to anything like google.com. Uh, menu item group would create sort of like a folder to group your items and then you can also link to a single entry, meaning that I can link directly to my profile ID. <coughs> and uh, by clicking there, you're, you're taking straight to, to the entry editing um, section. So let's, you know, just uh, do static link here and then uh, create and if I go to the menu items editor and select my custom menu, then I can do stuff like whatever, photoncms.com. Um, and then the static link should be, I guess this, and I can even pick an icon, whatever, and then create another. And let's do google.com. And, uh, and you know, so on. And uh, it should um, allow you to create um, practically anything you need, both in your front end and in your back end. And uh, it'll also allow you to nest, hold on, let me show you that, nest things like this. So uh, if I refresh right now, you'll see that under events now I have my users uh, module link, but I believe that this, uh, this menu is limited to a level of one, meaning that I cannot go deeper and put something in users, you see? That's nice. And uh, going back to this, so we're back to normal, right? So, um, uh, let's check out the front end. So, once you've built your structure and you're happy with your control panel, then it's time to move on and create uh, a website theme if you're actually um, displaying your data uh, in a website, you may use Photon to create mobile apps, then this step is totally not needed. But if you are building a website, then you should probably 
use whatever process you're using while building Laravel based applications like Laravel based websites. So the, the normal templating process applies and uh, you can see that uh, for Fodan CMS, I have you know, my blades set up here, uh, blade templating. Uh, if you don't know what it is, go ahead and check out the official Laravel documentation. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward stuff. I'm not going to go in details here because uh, I really think that uh, all of you guys pretty, know much, how, uh, pretty uh, much know how to do this. Um, what I've done in the routes file, uh, route, just, or uh, it's called web. PHP actually. I have my uh, homepage link to the public website controller and then the, the index uh, method. So right here you can see that uh, Fodan ships with a commented out IAPI um, kind of calls that are basically a way for you to use RESTful API from inside the PHP application without having to, you know, query or data um, using HTTP protocol, which should be, you know, awkward. So whatever you're able to do uh, using RESTful API, you're able to do it uh, using internal API. So I'm using it actually to pull out the posts and I'm using the filter route, which uh, let's uh, let's see uh, API documentation and then uh, filter uh, filter module entries and you can see that um, there are various uh, ways to filter the data using this uh, method and I'm using it to filter uh, or to show only published articles and I want, I want them sorted by ID and uh, descending order. And also I'm pulling out uh, the events from the events module that are also only published. And then I'm just returning these variables to my view and, and it's rendered there. Then there's listing. So the listing is used for the category uh, section hold on CMS podcast so this should be this section this section over here and uh, I'm using it to pull from a certain category here so, so the category equals category ID and I retrieved the category ID uh, before somewhere around here and it's as you can see pretty straightforward and easy to do. And uh, finally, I have my feed generated down below uh, using my um, reading from my posts. Uh, it's something uh, a bit more complex, as I, I said, uh, building uh, a, an XML feed. Uh, well, I'm going to do a blog post about that as well. So that's an interesting subject. And basically, this is all there is and the front end that I've done to create the CMS podcast website. Um, really, there, there's not nothing else to say. Um, I guess this sort of covers the basic Fodan CMS features. There's so much more to talk about. Um, probably I want to... Uh, point your attention to the Photon Sync capabilities. So what Photon Sync is, is demoed in this video here. Um, hold on, that's not the video. This is the video, come on. So this video, I'm, I'm going to link to it shows you how to uh, migrate your database and actually project structure over to your staging or your live environment. So um, actually I've, in, in this video, there's a demo how to sync this 
test repository called sync uh, test for on CMS comp. So let's log into its control panel quickly. So I'm uh, actually going to look at the product module. So you can notice that I'm on the sync test vote on cms.com website right now and then uh, that is served using Laravel Forge which I recommend you to use and the deploy script has this command at, at the very end that says for PHP artisan for food on sync meaning that whenever a new code is pulled from the repository this will run and then the quick deploy is enabled and if I open the sync test project locally uh, yeah I should probably go to the control panel local control panel here so yeah let's do this Right now, uh, they, uh, these two are in sync. So my local uh, development environment is in sync with the remote, like the staging environment. And I'm just gonna, well, let's remove the colors field. I don't need it. And let's add a new one. What shall we call it? Let's call it uh, special discount. Oh, uh, sorry special discount and let's not complicate anymore save changes so it you know informs me that it's deleting one and creating another field it's uh, applying changes locally and if i look at the module locally i'm uh, i'm actually seeing that you know everything's here the colors field is gone as you can see and then there's this special discount field added and this is all locally and then if I go back to my uh, project folder and if I do git status I, I can see that these two important files have been changed I'm, I'm just going to add those and then commit with a message test and push so it's pushing and uh, sorry uh, no, I mistyped uh, sorry yeah it's GCMSG yeah that's correct that should do it yeah it added and it's pushing right now done and this should kick off automatically since quick deploy is uh, on and you can see that it's deploying to my staging server over here and once it's done I'm gonna show you the latest deployment log you can see that it actually performed the photon sync process over here and let's refresh our module uh, yeah uh, you can see that it did the, did the change uh, it actually uh, has the price uh, the the color is gone and the discount is here uh, there's not much of a discount and uh, that's actually too much and the data is preserved actually this image is uh, probably deleted um, before but this is a, a way for you to sync the development environment with your staging server and your live server but it's also a way for you to sync development environments of various uh, programmers working in the same team so if you remember you know it's always a pain to kind of do the constant mysql 
exports and then you the colleague sends it to you and then you import and then stuff break and, and something like that so this pretty much saves the day it solves the problem that actually we were experiencing in our uh, agency for about you know 10, 10 years so it's it's a really really good feature so I guess this wraps it up that's everything I I have for you today Go ahead and check out Photon CMS at photoncms.com and also stay tuned for some uh, great reviews, I hope, and uh, also stay tuned to, and, and listen to the CMS podcast. I'm about to interview some really interesting folks in the CMS uh, community and uh, that's it. Bye-bye. Take care.